Well, welcome to Gearing, Nebraska. If you've never heard of it, it's a sleepy little town in southwest Nebraska. If you have heard of it, it's probably because you're paying attention to USA Cycling's first ever gravel national championships. Today is Thursday. I got in yesterday, traveling solo from Seattle, where my family is, we're visiting the in-laws, flying in from Seattle to Denver. I picked up a few things along the way, CO2s, groceries, and then hopped in the car and drove the three hours to scenic, beautiful, sunny, warm, windy, gearing Nebraska. Now, with the benefit of a little bit extra time because I am traveling solo, I wanted to show you a little bit of everything that I do in order to prepare for a race like this because it is, it's challenging and it's probably a bit like you. You probably don't have a mechanic at home. You probably don't have a swanier in your room. You probably don't have a travel agent at your disposal. Those are the ways that I'm operating. I'm my own each one of those things, except on occasion when I have Anna Gritas, who works with SRAM at these races, check out my most recent podcast. She is an all-star. So in short, I'm gonna show you the things that I pack, the nutrition that I do, which is akin to the food that I eat. Anyway, this is pretty cool. I'm excited to bring you along the way. So first things first, it's Thursday morning. Coffee is in hand. Next up, we're gonna build Ted's Cannondale. Let's go. Alright, bike's built. I'm doing the last minute prep before I get kitted up and go out the door, but um, one worthy activity is combine your shakeout ride, your training with a little bit of recon. So what we're looking at is where the 88 mile, the 25 mile, and the 50 mile, where they all overlap. Um, I want three to four hours today. So basically what I'm gonna do is ride the 50 mile. So I'll see the beginning of the course and then there's a little bit of a tidbit on the end, a little detour on the end of the 131. So I'm gonna be able to ride at the beginning and the end of the course, and optimally somewhere in that three to four hour range. So it allows you to see what's going on, what's, what's challenging, what might present some issues. That's all, let's get kitted up and go out the door. example of how climbing is climbing whether you're on a steep slope in the mountains we're here in slightly hilly Nebraska we're going up a 3% grade but in slightly thick sand and when you're otherwise accustomed to going 21 miles an hour going uphill just feels slow Well, that was a proper day out. It's about lunchtime. Um, I picked up this mighty fine half gallon of chocolate milk. So, uh, recovery is key, always. You know what's fun about cycling? Is you do things as a result of the sport that you would never, ever, ever do outside of being a cyclist. For example, I try not to show other people that I'm sweating. However, as a result of being a cyclist, I don't know if you can see, I have ridiculous sweat stains, which is the kind of thing that as a cyclist, you finish up your ride, you're like, oh man, I'm covered in salt. Check that out. 
Anyway, very happy with the decision to bring hydration pack, a couple tall bottles. Let's see, what did I notice out there? I would describe the course as obviously hot, dry, windy, sun scorched, uh, characteristic of a lot of 90 degree turns, rolling, I know I've said it already, but I'm gonna say it again, windy, because that's gonna play a key part in the race. Dry, dusty, probably already said those. Um, nothing was too eye-opening outside of the hills are consistent. You might think of Nebraska as a flat place, but there was nothing really flat today. No, I take that back. There was a ton that was flat, but then once you're in the rollers, you're in some serious rollers. Um, you might be going down a hill that's that's two or three percent pedaling easy at 30 miles an hour, or you might be going up a hill into a headwind at six miles an hour, or five miles an hour, or four miles an hour. So, I don't know, I mean, they're all they're all things that I'm really glad I noticed, and I'm glad I, I came and pre-rode. Anyway, time to eat some lunch and shower, get a little bit of rest. Hey all, what's going on? Uh, it is Friday, it is the day before the race. I wanted to point out some of the things right here in front of me that I take along with me that are key to success throughout the weekend. So these might be intuitive, they might not be. Check it out. We got a whole handful of Allen tools. Now you say, duh, Ted, you're gonna bring your tools where, wherever you go. Here's a multi-tool, which is my general multi-tool. It, it has the general basics of what I want, but one thing I noticed recently is that it doesn't hit every single bolt on the bike that I need. So, in particular, I bring these extra Allens that are gonna be able to get that long reaching place and places and bolts that you wouldn't otherwise have. It is key to bring all of the Allens for the bike you have. Batteries, SRAM, ETAP, batteries, they're amazing. Those are great, bring along spares. Don't forget to bring along your C2032 batteries. Those things are key. All right, here's another one, the right pair of sunglasses. Saw me wearing these yesterday. These are the Sun God Balkans. These are the full frame setup. What I'm gonna be wearing on race day is these, the much darker lens glasses. These are Balkans with just the top frame. Huge fan, huge fan of these glasses. I've been using them all year. Uh, I made the swap to Sun God this year. Look, there are a lot of really light, comfortable, good looking sunglasses out there. What separates Sun God from the rest, because they already got all those key attributes, is they are a company with incredible ethos. They look after the environment, they look after their employees, and they look after their athletes. Spend some time on Sun God's website, check them out, check out their glasses, see all the great work that they're doing. I love these sunglasses and I love this company. All right, here's another awesome one, the untapped flask. This Hydro Pack flask carries five and a little bit extra packets, gels, as you say, um, of untapped. So the equivalent of five plus of these. You get the bulk untapped, you put it into the, to the flask. It makes your life easier. I'm actually gonna be racing with two of these this weekend for the first time ever. So the equivalent of what, almost 11 packets. This is awesome. Valve stems. These are something that I keep in my bathroom kit, my toiletry kit, so that I always have them. Why? Because it wouldn't be the first time that I've broken the rubber gasket that goes into the uh, center part of the rim, nor would it be the first time that I've broken a valve core. So having spare valves is instrumental and worth every penny. Friction paste. When you take your seat post out, put it back in 45 times, sooner or later you're gonna lose the friction paste. You don't wanna hit a bump and find that your saddle is dropped, so bring along spare friction paste. Dyna plugs. I'm saying the Kleenex, the name brand of the eponymous product. Dyna plugs are amazing. In particular, I love this one, and here's my little, here's my little go-to trick. This is called the Dyna plug air. I tape them together, you pull this off, you uh, screw it in, you insert it into your hole in the tire, and then there's these little holes right here. 
And when you open up the CO2, it inflates, you pull it out, and then you have an inflated tire. I'm a huge fan of that. Another Dynaplug product that I really like is this bad boy. It's slightly longer than your standard Dynaplug. There's two plugs on each end, but then guess what? You can unscrew it and screw it in the other side. So this one has four plugs, which is something that I think is key. I like to uh, plan for the worst and hope for the best. So thankfully I've never had to use all four plugs on a ride or in a race, but that's something I like a lot. Move on to tires. Bring spare tires. You don't want to show up to a race with the two tires that belong exclusively on your bike because chances are, if you do that, you're going to have an issue. Have a spare tire. Bring spare sealant. We're in a town of Gearing, Nebraska, where there is, uh, I don't think a bike shop for, for 50 miles or more. So bringing in a little bit of extra sealant is something that I am not apologetic for. What's up, nerds? One of the most common questions I get is what tire pressure do I use? My most common answer is go to the SRAM Axis Tire Pressure Guide, punch that into Google, uh, figure out which tire pressure is gonna work for you. I'm a huge fan of this. That, that guide uses a whole, whole bunch of uh, variables. How much do you weigh? What's your inner width, uh, of, inner width of your rim? Uh, what is your bike weigh? What kind of casing are you using on your tire? So many really important key attributes that are gonna vary things. So when somebody says, Ted, what tire pressure do you use? It's such a silly question because my variables are so much different than yours, are different than the terrain you're riding, how much you weigh, so on and so forth. So don't ask me that question. Get a tire pressure gauge and use that tire pressure guide. A minivan, dual automatic sliding doors, tons of storage room. What's not to like, besides aesthetics? You never know when you're gonna need electric tape, so travel with spare electric tape. Spare derailleur hangers. Again, 50 miles between us and the nearest bike shop. I don't wanna have an issue, so I bring a spare derailleur hanger. I'm a big fan of watching the, the Vuelta. Right now, Sepp Kuss is in the lead. He's absolutely crushing it. Not bad for his third Grand Tour of the year. Sep, keep it up, you're doing amazing. So there you have it. You're traveling to a race, you wanna make sure that you have your key tools, your key things, but then make sure you have the things that really make you happy. The things that, that differentiate you from a normal day. This is gonna separate you from an average day and an amazing day. Or this or this, or a spare two, or a spare battery. Bring your stuff, it's important. There you have it, uh, it's race day. So thanks very much for tuning in, for watching the video, for seeing the things that I do to pack to prepare for a race like this. I think it's time to go race bikes now that it's the tender hour of 6.07 a.m. Let's go.